Welcome here, my name is Julianne and this is Lovebird Lane Makes and you are in the right place if you enjoy knitting and quilting and lots of little crafty things and I get up to a lot of them so I will talk about all of them here. Today it is knitting based is what I have to share. I have not done any more sewing. I have my quilt here that still needs to be bound. Um, I have some repairs here for my father-in-law which I still have not done. I still have not even sandwiched this guy up here but uh, yeah I have done some knitting and one of the projects is brand new and that hasn't even been really been cast on yet uh, I am literally in the stage of swatching just today so <laughs> before we get going I would really like to welcome you all here and I've had a couple of new subscribers so thank you so much for subscribing and if you haven't already would you mind just clicking that subscribe button for me and giving me a thumbs up that would be amazing it really helps me out here on YouTube so the first thing is first which always is first for me is socks so let's begin with those now these socks are the same socks that you would have seen last week and even the week before I can't remember now but I remember uh, I actually frogged what I had been knitting so these are my um, Mewstone socks so I had a pair of socks in the Mewstone cave colorway which is what this is this is Lovebird Lane yarns Mewstone cave and I had started I had originally knit some vanilla socks they went wrong in different ways as I have discussed previously on this channel and um, you can find me talking about them I'll put them up in the card you can go back and, and have a listen to see what my issues were but I have since mostly knit one of these so this these are the speckled space socks and I had mostly knit one of these and frogged it washed the yarn because I was getting all sorts of bumpy bumpy fabric which you can see now I am not getting <laughs> and uh, I re-knit them so this is as far as I've gotten I finished the heel yesterday I did the heel turn well I finished the gusset actually I was maybe down here when I started yesterday so I've gotten all the way through the heel and I'm back to the leg but I think I'm going to have the same issue that I had previously is that I'm going to run out of yarn before too long on the leg so <laughs> my legs are not going to be very long on these which is really strange I think it must just be the speckled space socks have these sections here see these little floats they're basically a yarn over so every time you see one of those little floats there has been a yarn over in the pattern basically I think that's chewing up all the yarn I think that's where all the yarns going because these originally when they were just vanilla socks were actually quite tall in the leg whereas now I mean my heel is finishing about here and I think I maybe will get this much so they're probably going to be much shorter than I would usually uh, knit my leg but as I am held by the constraints of the yarn that I have uh, that is just the way that it's going to be so I think so long as I can get my second sock to be identical to the first sock then everything will be fine it'll all work out and no great stress so these have been trucking along like I said I've, I did this whole whole section yesterday because yesterday was Australia Day which is a very contentious subject here in Australia um, better you know greater minds than mine can explain that than <laughs> better than I can uh, but yeah essentially we have a public holiday and um, Simon was home from work and I just spent the afternoon knitting on socks which was quite nice hopefully by next week I will have this one definitely done and maybe even the second one done so I might have an FO for a change so that is my speckled space socks now the second work in progress that I have to share with you today is something that I'm kind of I think I'm a bit iffy on it really because uh, if you remember in last week's episode when I went through my yarn stash I'll put it up in the card so you can go and check that out if you haven't already uh, I found a bag of yarn that I mentioned that I had crocheted something for my sister-in-law for her wedding so I had 
some of this yarn left and uh, it was in like a I don't know really what you like wavy like a wavy crochet striped um, blanket I suppose it wasn't really wide enough to be a blanket but that was what I kind of had uh, being made out of it and now in hindsight I kind of feel like I might have actually wanted to continue with that project but I did actually frog it and wind up the yarn again and make this so it is it doesn't really look like anything at the moment but I basically used Georgie Hallam's pattern uh, called memory blanket I think is all it's called it's a free pattern on Ravelry and uh, Georgie Hallam is Tiki Knits if that name rings more of a bell to you guys I just cast this on because I thought it would be a quick knit and it's actually turning out to be a little bit slower than I was expecting but basically what I'm doing is just diagonal stripes. That's what it's going to turn out to be. Can you stop interrupting my vlog? <laughs> Granger is laying down on the floor next to me. I gave him an anti-inflammatory just before, so he's probably a little bit loopy in, in his pain-free bliss. Back to the blanket, or whatever this is going to be, on my Ravelry page, I've basically called it a mitered something because I don't know how big this is going to turn out. This is bulky yarn. This is Peyton's Jet, which is a wool and alpaca blend. I think it's 70-30, 70% wool. I personally don't like alpaca. I can't wear it next to my skin, hence not wanting to make some sort of sweater or something like that because as soon as the alpaca gets ugh, next to my skin it just it's just like a million needles into my skin I just don't like it um, I think often people feel like that with wool uh, wool I am perfectly fine with but as soon as there's any kind of alpaca in there I'm not I'm not down with that so <laughs> yeah I thought some sort of blanket table runner Something like that is a better option for this yarn. So there's three different colours that I had. It's kind of like a, a fawn kind of brown. Then there's this more mild colour which has got the grey and the fawn kind of in it. And then this darker grey. So the colours are really nice together. I do really, really like them together. Uh, I just, like I say, I don't know what this is going to be. Because pretty much I am constrained by how much yarn I have <laughs> so I will pick up the balls and you can see how much that I have I mean they look big but they don't actually weigh that much and the yardage is not actually that much so bear with me okay so this is what I have I do have I think maybe another one no I used that all up so I am onto this one aren't I yes <laughs> you can see the tail hanging off um, so these yarns came in 50 gram balls and there's 81 yards per ball. I'm not sure what that is in meters because I just work with yards. And I think I had the most of this one and then followed by this one, followed by this one. So I think I worked out that I need approximately 14 to 15 grams per each one of these, um, mitered squares. So I probably have enough to make something kind of little. I'm thinking what I might do, I'm going to dump these back on the ground, uh, because I have turned it, it is now four, four squares wide essentially, because I'm adding on from this corner here. I might leave it at that width, keep it at the four squares um, wide, and potentially just go long and if I get something that's kind of maybe long enough to be a table runner or uh, maybe go over the foot of a bed uh, or something like that, <laughs> that could be an option. However, I have not ruled out going back to my original plan for this yarn, which was that wavy crochet blanket bed footer whatever it was that I was making uh, I have not ruled out going back to that because I don't know I just seemed like for the amount of yarn that I had used in that piece of fabric having large crochet stitches I think I guess they're probably double crochet um, stitches it was just kind of looking I don't know if it's true I mean people say that crochet chews up a lot more yarn than knitting does but it appeared like it was getting bigger than what this is because this feels really dense I'm casting on uh, 40 stitches 40 stitches yes 40 stitches at the beginning of each square because if you if you're not familiar with mitered square blankets basically you will cast on 
all of these stitches here so basically where my two fingers are that is where you cast on stitches and then you decrease and that brings it up towards a point so yeah I've cast on 40 stitches these squares are quite dense I'm using a 5.5 millimeter needle and yeah I'm not sold I'm not 100% sold and this is not super wash yarn so it is possible that I can like even though I've cut the pieces um, for each of these squares I can just um, use wet wet splicing to um, felt them back together so that's not worrying me at all but yeah it's just I'm undecided I don't know whether I should continue with this like I've gotten this far and I've kind of lost steam on it because I don't know if this is worth the time that I'm spending on it because I don't know that this is going to be what I want from it so <laughs> yeah that's that's it's very hard to explain guys I have some weird stuff going on in my brain but let me know what you think if you think I should per persist with doing this mitered blanket mitered something uh, let me know if you think I should go back to the crochet option let me know also because I'm really not decided I would love to hear your rationale why would you do one or the other I really want to know so that I can decide what I'm doing with this project or else it's just gonna be another one of those UFOs that sits upstairs in that box that you all saw a couple of weeks ago <laughs> uh, so yeah please do let me know down in the comments and the final thing I have to talk about today there's probably gonna be some rustling because I do have a plastic bag on my lap so just bear that in mind is a new sweater so as you saw two weeks ago <laughs> I have quite a few whips on the go but I think I, my knitting mojo has been really low lately and I haven't really been wanting to knit very much these socks have kind of taken really taken my fancy and they've taken my knitting mojo from basically zero to something I, I, I probably couldn't put a number on it but I, I feel like I really need something to give me a good kick up the butt and really get my mojo back in. And I, I think this might be the thing to do it. Um, simply because this is some yarn that has been in my stash for an incredibly long time. I, I could not tell you when I got it. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> And it's it's some of my precious wool and vine yarn. So you saw me go through that last week and I had basically a couple of sweater quantities. So I mean I have a sweater quantity of one colorway. So it's just four four skeins of one colorway. This is four skeins of four different colorways and it is destined I believe at this point in time to be a striped sweater by Andrea Maori. I initially got this pack. I should probably show you before I get much further. <laughs> But this was a palette, a palette set. I will just hold that up. So you, this is why I have the bag. So it's Bull and Vine Yarns. It's a palette set. is in her footsie base, which is 8020 Superwash Blue Face Lester and Nylon. And it's in the colorways Jilted Rose, Dirty on Purpose, Tiger, and Black Pearl. And those colorways initially were put together by Kristen of Wool and Vine Yarns to knit an Exploration Station shawl, which is a Stephen West pattern. When I purchased this set, I did initially purchase it to make that Exploration Station shawl. However, I have a lot of shawls. I love knitting shawls. I'm not going to stop knitting shawls. I have a lot of really lovely ones, but I just don't find myself wearing them very often because I'm an introvert I don't go out of the house very often I I don't go out of the house at all if I can help it because I'm just I've, I've got a history with agoraphobia as well so even though I do now leave the house and I'm not as afraid as I used to be I st it's still not my favorite thing to do so here in Australia in Adelaide we are a little bit more mild with our winters like it can get cold but um, it's not like you're going down to single digits very often and definitely not during the day uh overnight perhaps but not during the day and i'm just not finding that i'm wearing my shawls and i'm actually thinking of including them in a d stash that i'm going to be doing shortly going through my shawls and my knit accessories and just d stashing them perhaps giving them away to people that i know just my thoughts are is if you've taken all of that time to 
knit something beautiful with beautiful yarn that it should be worn it should be enjoyed and i'm just not doing that with them and even if i just de-stash something and someone pulls it apart just to use the yarn i don't care like at least that yarn and or that item is going to get used and it's certainly not being used by me not at this point in time anyway so that was my idea to not make a shawl out of this yarn because I've been keeping it for so long so many years just sitting in my stash and then to make something that I'm not going to wear it's kind of pointless it's a pointless exercise to me so what I thought I would do is Kristen who obviously dyed this yarn recently had a video and it was about beginner sweaters she went through a list of all the sweaters that she has knit that she believes are good for beginners to knit and i'm not a beginner sweater knitter however she was wearing a, i think she was wearing it no she wasn't wearing it i saw it somewhere recently in my <laughs> in in my social media rounds um where she was wearing her stripes sweater that she knit from her own yarn and it got a thought in my head because the pattern says that it actually calls for sport weight yarn, whereas this is fingering weight yarn. However, Kristen did knit hers from fingering weight yarn. So <laughs> I thought, well, why can't I? So my plan is that I am going to actually swatch for this project. So I have wound one ball of yarn, one cake of yarn. I'll show you the colors before we go much further though. Uh, this one is jilted rose. So it's like this really warm, it's kind of almost an orangey shell type pink. Uh, that's Jilted Rose. And then we have Dirty On Purpose, which is more of this sort of grey, brown, kind of speckled yarn. Then this one is Tiger, or Tiger, so that you can decide how you want to say it. So T-A-I-G-A, -A, Tiger. I think it's like a, like a landform, like a, a type of biome as it would be called in <laughs> minecraft which is a game that my husband and i play and uh, yeah so that is this one it's more a bit more purple i believe Kristen's newer version of this is a bit more brown um but this was obviously like i said from quite a long time ago and then the final one that i'm actually swatching with is black pearl so I've actually worked with Black Pearl and Jilted Rose before in a cowl, a striped cowl, and that will not be getting de-stashed. Uh, that was on Kristen's Smitten DK base, which is a merino nylon blend. Uh, no, sorry, merino cashmere nylon blend. Black Pearl uh, is this one, sort of like a grey, purple, pink, black. And this is what I am swatching with. The pattern calls for three point... no. Am I right? I can't remember. Um, well, I'm swatching on 3.5 mil needles anyway, uh, 75 mil needles anyway, because I am obviously using a smaller uh, yarn weight than the pattern asked for. So I thought what I would do is choose my needle to uh, create the kind of fabric, the knitted fabric that I actually prefer. And I think I quite like this. This I obviously will need to be blocked before I um, cast on. So I actually, I think I quite like the fabric that I'm getting at the moment. It is relatively, I wouldn't say it's firm, it's not dense, but I often find when I do knit fingering weight sweaters, they tend to stretch a lot. I mean, I don't usually do a gauge swatch so that's probably part of the problem but I do find that the the stitches tend to be very big what I thought I would do is do a gauge swatch even in the round like it says in the pattern and because this is fingering weight yarn not sport weight yarn I'm probably going to come out with a smaller gauge I'm assuming this is all assuming all assumptions at the moment before I finish this and block it and figure out from there what size I want to knit. So, so long as I'm happy with the fabric that I get, which is why I'm going through this exercise, which is something that I don't really usually care to do, so that I can get my fabric right, work out what my gauge is, and then extrapolate that into the size that I choose. So potentially 
if my gauge is much smaller, I'm going to have to pick a much larger size to get it to fit me. So like, say for instance, I think the last time I checked, I'm a 48 inch bust and, um, you know, I might need to get a 56 inch size, but it's going to shrink because of my smaller gauge. If my, if my logic is correct, I do have a program on my iPad. It's called an iPad. It's called an app, Julianne. And, <laughs> um, it is, I can't remember what it's called. I will put it on the screen somewhere so that you can see it too. I bought it as a bundle a while ago with like another knitting tracking program where you can bring your pattern in and you can track through the pattern. And basically you can plug in what your gauge is, what the pattern's gauge is, and then it will give you the difference in size. So, you know, if my gauge is a lot smaller and then I plug in the size that I would normally knit, um, it would say, well, it's going to be three inches less than the pattern requires. So then I know that I can, if I can get a size that, you know, say I put the 56 inch size in, it says it's going to be three inches shorter, uh, three, three inches narrower, and I want 48 plus however much ease. Like I can work it out that way. I know that sounds really confusing. <laughs> Maybe I will do like a screen capture when I do all of this. I'll screen cap my iPad <laughs> and that'll probably be a better way to explain to you guys um, how it works. It sort of saves doing a bunch of other calculations because I can just plug in the numbers into this program or this app and it will tell me what the result is. That is my plan. <laughs> Hopefully that plan will work. And I'm hoping that I will have a, a, a started sweater for you next week. And I have actually been thinking, I can't decide. The only thing with this is, is I'm, been, I'm trying to decide if I want to dye a fifth colour. Kristen's sweater has a, like a black neck cuffs. And I'm assuming hem, I can't remember off the top of my head. And I've got these four colours. This one could work as my black, I suppose. The other three, because uh, she did stripe the black with her other colours. Black was one of her colours, her colourway grim. But I'm wondering whether I want to just dye a little bit. I don't have any of this base in stock, but if I just wanted to dye a little bit of black just to do the neck, hem and cuffs. Um, but I'm not sure. I don't know if that's something that I really want to do or just keep it to these four colours. If you have any thoughts on that, please let me know down below. I just, I don't know. I just like the look of Kristen's with the black on those edges, which is the only reason that I'm tossing up the idea. But I do think I could probably get away with the black pearl in place of the black. It'll probably work. <laughs> It'll probably be fine. But yeah, that is just something that I'm floating the idea of. So let me know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. But that's it. That is all I have to talk to you about today. So it's a bit of a shorter one. The last two when I've been doing my audits have been a little bit longer than I would probably normally do. And this one's going to be a little bit shorter, I believe. So, but that's okay. Uh, today is a pretty warm day. It's going to be 37 degrees here in Adelaide. I am beginning to sweat already hopefully you can't see that uh, but basically I think what I'm going to do after this is pop the aircon on just chill chill the room out a little bit so I probably should just get on with it let you guys get on with your day and uh, just say I hope you enjoyed and if you did make sure that you are subscribed I do one of these every week at the moment and I'm hoping to stay to that regular uh, upload schedule so uh, you should see a video at least once a week from me here I'm I'm planning on getting some tutorials done soon some quilting tutorials because that was something that uh, was asked of me last year when I suggested if you would like me to do some beginner uh, quilting tutorials so some of those are coming down the pipe I haven't got that many listed but if you do have a request for some sort of quilting procedure <laughs> that you would like me to uh, explain and film for you guys also let me know down in the comments I'm happy to take any suggestions that you have and I guess until next week happy knitting happy crafting and I will catch you in the next one thanks guys bye